Appreciate you coming, and I thank God for a beautiful day. Amen. Sure enough, he is the one that gave it to us, so we're going to praise him for it. But anyhow, I want to give you something out of the Psalms. The Bible says in Psalms 37, he says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. That means where's our focus and attention? Amen. There are so many times we let them steal our thunder, steal our joy. We need not to worry about evildoers. You need to continue to look to the Lord. Amen. You know, it's going to be out there what it's going to be. But guess what? What it's going to be when we get to glory, it's going to be all well worth it. Say amen right there. Amen. What a great day that will be. Seems like there ought to be a song like that, Brother John. <laughs> amen. Oh, there is? All right. Well, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord, as we come to the throne, thank you for the privilege. Help us, guide us, direct us, give us what we need here tonight. Lord, I am rejoicing. For those that are tuning in at home and those of us that are here, uh, Lord, a lot of times we don't see and we don't realize, we don't understand, but we know that you're doing so much and it goes above and beyond anything we say, think, or do. I'm so happy to hear that we've toppled over 3,000. Well, Lord, what a great blessing that is. And I pray, Lord, as you do continue to grow this ministry, that we'll see much more uh, souls saved and lives uh, changed and and thy will be done. We just lift thee up and we praise you in all these areas. Help us in all these circumstances. We continue to pray for these different families that are mourning the loss of their loved one. And I pray, Lord, you'll touch and help and heal them. But, Lord, help us to be a light to those we come in contact with. We thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. And when he does say 3,000, that means 3,028 days. Was it February 29th? 29 or 28 yeah something like that so we get, we get those reports all in all the time and I, I keep trying to get them where I can take Melissa's trying to teach me as technology y'all and it's hard for me to get but I can take my hand now and just walk across my phone and it takes a picture of what I'm looking at so <laughs> I'm trying to get it to where I can take and give it to him and let him see what it's talking about but ho hopefully I'll be able to do that before long if you would stand with me please stand up stand up for Jesus amen Page 413. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer long. From victory unto victory, his army shall Trumpet call away for to the mighty conflict in this is glorious day. He that our men now serve against a number four, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength the whole. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Footprints of Jesus, page 310. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard the calling, come follow me. And we see where the footprints falling lead us. Oh, pray. 
Nothing better than that. No one better than that. I tell you what a great thing to follow the Lord. Amen. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus. You know, when we really get down to the nuts, where things really are grounded down, all that sort of thing right there, the rubber meeting the road kind of stuff, Brother Mike, ain't it good that we have God? All the other doesn't matter. We got God. And we praise the Lord for that. Amen. What a great God that we serve. He loves us. He cares for us. He goes above and beyond anything we say, think, or do. What a great God we have. Amen. I tell you, there's a lot of people look to a lot of different things, Brother Bill. But there's none better than looking to the Lord. I am rejoicing over Friday night. Thank God for that. Six o'clock. We'll be up here. And it'll be movie night again. And uh, you say, well, what in the world are we going to eat? Well, that's what y'all going to be bringing. Say amen right there. You know, it's called finger foods for a reason. You take your fingers and you eat it. Amen. How many of y'all like them buffalo wings? Somebody must because they done put it on the, on the list after two or three times. Sure enough. But anyways, looking forward to that. Going to have some good old buffalo wings that night, apparently. Some piggies in the blanket. You say, now why do they put piggies in a blanket like that? Well, I guess because you don't want to be cold. You want to keep them warm. Amen. Sure enough. Why are you getting a blanket? You want to get warm. Say amen right there. But anyhow, looking forward to all that. And that'll be Friday night. Having a good fellowship. We'll be in the back and, and watching a big movie screen back there and all and, and uh, just having a wonderful time. And so we're looking forward to that. We're also looking forward to putting Bibles together the last Tuesday of the month. And thank God for that. And we have the opportunity to do that. Uh, we do have coming up the women's deal that's taking place in, what is it, May? April 24th. April 24th. See, that's why she keeps me tra uh, straight on that. But anyways, we'll, we'll have the information and we'll start putting that out next week about the sign-up list and everything for you ladies and all. But we have right now, we do have a sign-up list to, uh, about Friday night. And also, we need to get a sign-up list uh, about the uh, breakfast for Easter Sunday. Now, you say breakfast, Easter Sunday, that means sunrise service. Yeah, that won't hurt us. Matter of fact, uh, for us guys that like to sleep in, Brother Tim, we'll make these guys happy for one day out of the year. Amen? We'll crack, we'll crack out there to crack of dawn, and we'll be out there and, and take all that in. How many of y'all remember last year and what a great time? It, it, it was good. It really was. And so I'm looking forward to a good time this time. And hopefully the weather is cooperating, and if it does, we'll be right outside. Amen. And so looking forward to that and uh, just having a wonderful time. Then afterwards, we'll have breakfast. And I don't know about you, but I like breakfast. I mean, anybody else in here? No, y'all don't like breakfast? Get over it if you don't like breakfast. Amen. <laughs> we're going to have breakfast and have a wonderful time and fellowship in that. And then at the preaching hour, we're going to have regular uh, you know, uh, Easter Sunday. Just, you know, everybody come decked out in Easter stuff. You know, uh, now, contrary to what Vern, he, he was wanting to put on that bunny suit the other day, and I thought he must have, Vern, there ain't no way. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. It ain't, and everything. But he was talking about the bunny suit. He saw that bunny suit down at the store and was wanting to talk about that. He talks a lot. By the way, by the way, he's adopted Danny. Y'all didn't know that? He found out that stimulus, he could get more money if he had Danny as a dependent and everything, so he adopted him. Amen. True story. Ask him. Ask him. I told him, I said, I heard it out of your mouth, but he ain't backing off of that one. Amen. Sure enough, he keeps saying, your boy, not now, you adopted him. <laughs> Amen. But anyways, 
I digress, I guess is what they say. Looking forward to these things. So put them on your calendar and think about that. Pray about it. Pray for those days. Amen. We want big days around here because we want God to move in such a way. And so every opportunity that we have. So we thank God for those things. It's like right now. We have an opportunity to give back to him a portion of what he's given to us and what a great opportunity that is. And so we thank God for that. Those tuning in, appreciate you. Glad that you're tuning in. Amen. What a blessing. And it is. Brother John, he shared with me, we've been right there at the 2,000 mark. And he told me today, he said, nope, we want over 3,000 for the month of February. Praise God. What a, you know, this little church here in Estill Springs and y'all make it possible. So share it. Take the messages and share it out there and let other people tune in. And uh, you say, aren't you worried about what people might say? No, not really. <laughs> it's coming out of the word. It's coming from the word of God. You just take it as it comes. Amen. By the way, the book hits me just like it hits everybody else. Amen. Just what it does. But thank God that we can give it with love. And uh, we thank God for that. Brother Tim, come on. We'll, we'll ask the blessing over the offering tonight. And we thank God for the opportunity. Pray, brother. <clears throat> Yes, Lord. Yes, to be with those that were mentioned earlier, Lord, the ones that have lost loved ones. We just ask you to be with the family and the other ones that are sick and infirm, fighting COVID and just all the problems that they're having, Lord. We just ask that you be with them that they might be able to come back with us and worship you once again, Lord. Bless us, our Lord, that the pastor brings to us, that we share in your word, Lord. We just ask you to be with the offering that we use to thy works, Lord. Amen. Out there and I saw y'all singing along. Y'all could have sung that on that one. I don't think anybody been upset about that. Amen. Oh, thank God for what God has done in our lives. What a great God. Go with me to Romans in chapter number 10. Romans in chapter number 10. We'll read one verse. We're going to go Lord in prayer and I'm going to get on into the message tonight.
Verse 16 says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Let's pray. Lord, as we come to the throne, we thank you for the privilege to be able to come to thee and know that you hear us. And in the process, dear Lord, I pray that you'll give us what we need. Sometimes we talk about what we want. Tonight we need you. And what we need is thy hand in a mighty way, thy rearing and guidance, thy instruction and encouragement, thy comfort and thy help. I pray, Lord, that you'll help us in all these areas. I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you tonight, that they'll come to know you before it's everlasting too late, either here or at home. I pray, Lord, that the message would be in such a way that it would move and stir and uplift and encourage. And I pray, Lord, you'll have your will and way in every aspect of it. We praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you. Help us, guide and direct through every aspect in Christ's name. Amen. I don't want to re-look over this morning, but I do want to tell you tonight as we're looking here, he's talking about who hath believed our report. Who's believed it? When I show people, when I give to people, it makes a big difference. Going back to grandma for a second, my life ought to make an impact on other people's lives. Where I go and the things that I do, it does speak volumes, amen. When I start looking at the word and I want to backtrack for a second, verse number 12, we see here there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. I'm glad that God puts us all on the same playing field. We're all on the same playing field. Now, I want to look at, uh, around the room tonight. Just uh, Y'all y'all just kind of let your hair down with me a little bit and just ask yourself this question. Am I any better than the one sitting next to me? Am I any worse than the one in front of me? You know the answer to that is no and no. No and no. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is a reality that we all live with. Now, in that and because of that, and by the way, if I was taking time, Romans 3, verse number 19 through verse number 20, or well, you go all the way to verse number, uh, verse number uh, uh, that whole deal, go to verse number 31, and you'll see in that passage of Scripture right there, we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. But it is his glory that we do possess and that we do have. And because of that, it makes all the difference in the world. Now, why would God give me his great glory? Why would God offer me his mercy, his grace, and his love? Why would God instill in me his hand of justness and righteousness? Well, I'll tell you the reason why. Because he loves me. And because he loves me, he goes above and beyond anything I say, think, or do. Now, why? I'm going to start to ponder. Well, let's go back to the creation of. When we found out this morning, Brother John, what faith is, it is the substance of and the evidence of. Amen? Right? Everybody with me tonight? It's the substance of, it's the evidence of. So it's something tangible, really. When you really get to it, Faith is something tangible. A lot of times when we talk about faith, we talk about the uh, fictitious stuff. No, no, no. Faith is real. Faith is real. Now, with that in mind, who created heaven and earth? Well, depends on who you talk to. Some would have you to believe that who created heavens and the, uh, the heaven and the earth is chance. I don't know about you, but I ain't seen chance create anything. You can't, you can't uh, really, really uh, fool me or show me anything that chance has ever done that's been really, uh, really helpful, if you will. By chance, by chance, by chance. Mm, 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 mm. So who created heavens and the earth? Some would say a little amoeba crawled out of the ocean and bam, it was a one cell organism and began to take on... Who created the ocean and who created the one cell organism? I mean, you, you go down that road and sooner or later you're going to have to get to someone or something that created. Some people say it was a big bang. Boom! And here we are. Where did that come from? And how many of y'all have ever seen an explosion create anything other than damage? Come on now, amen. Matter of fact, 
When I was up there in Kansas one day, I, uh, it was a hot summer day, and that old Dodge truck that we had, I had to unhook the battery every time I'd shut it down, or otherwise, when I get back in that truck, the battery would be dead. So this one day, I went around there like I always done, and I accidentally took the wrong terminal off first. And what happened next, that battery exploded when it arced and everything, and my hand went numb and it all over the side of my face and everything, and I could look across the street over there, and the, the mailman was over there, and he looked over there at me, and they, people talking to me. I couldn't hear anybody because it was all in my head. How many of y'all have ever experienced an explosion? I don't recall any life coming from that. So it comes back to, what do we believe? In Genesis 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and the earth and darkness was, was, was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and, the, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, what do you believe? Well, I believe, um, Miss Linda, that God created, just like his word says. You say, why in the world would you believe a thing like that? Well, because I've seen the hand of God in his creation. How many of y'all have ever seen the hand of God in God's creation? Amen. We just came off of Brother John was talking about the 28 days of February. How many of y'all know that every now and then we'll have 29 do you all realize that we have 29 days of February because we have a God that is real? How many of y'all know where the extra day comes from on our calendar? Does anybody know why we have an extra day on our calendar? Well, I'll help you all out if you don't know. Isn't it wonderful to know God's word? About 4,000 years ago, there was an event that took place where God was allowing his children to win a battle as long as it was daylight. But when the sun started to go down, they were losing the battle. So the man of God went to God and said, God, if you will sustain the day, so we can win the battle. And he did. Guess how long he stopped that sun for? So about 4,000 years ago, God stopped the sun for one day. Amen. And over time, they were looking out there many years ago through that satellite telescope that they got, and they discovered that there was a gap in time. Wow. And because of that, they had to make up an extra. We actually are 365 and one quarter days every year. Well, you can't live a quarter of a day. So they had to add those quarters together. Yes, I learned a little bit in school when I did go to public education. Say amen right there. You add four together and you get one complete day. That's why every four years in the month of February, our shortest month, they add an extra day so that you and I can get our calendars spot on. Y'all with me tonight? Now, who in the world created a deal like that and caused a deal like that? I was sharing with them earlier about the deal. How many of y'all remember when the Discovery Channel did an in-depth study of the Red Sea? Out in the middle of the Red Sea, and they were bum-fuzzled. Why in the world, out in the middle of the Red Sea, they would find these chariot wheels? I don't know, Brother Mike, I read a story somewhere or another, oh yeah, in the Word of God, where God opened up the Red Sea, and his children went through on dry ground. And y'all know that that's been argued and debated and, and kicked back and forth, back and forth, for all these years. But lo and behold, these chariot wheels, these specialty chariot wheels, were down in there in the Red Sea, and for those of you at home and say, well, that wood would have rotted, it did. You know what they found? Those chariot wheels that had gold in the shape of a wheel were down there 
because gold don't rot. And they discovered and said, huh, we remember that story of the Red Sea and opening up and everything. There might be some truth to that. Are we listening? I can go on and on and on about stories that have revealed themselves over time. How many of y'all remember in the 80s when they actually discovered where the ark is landed, their map air at? Y'all remember that? They won't let them go back in there now. You know why? <laughs> uh, too, many talk, too many people talking about that ark. It's actually real up there. And the reason they were able to find it is because the snow caps up there were melting down at that period of time. And now they've covered back up and everything. But I remember watching the documentary on that. Very amazing to watch them go into that ark. How many of y'all seen that? Am I the only one? Isn't it amazing how man sometimes catches up to the things of God? Now you say, Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm getting back to what we really believe and why we believe what we believe. Now let me make it very plain and simple for you. I didn't need snow caps to melt in order for me to believe the ark is real. I didn't need this satellite to camera to be showing out through there to reveal or to understand that that's real. Amen. I got God's word on it. And I trust the word of God. I believe in the word of God. But in all honesty, Miss Melissa, a lot of people, they don't know what to believe. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why people challenge and question and wrestle with and back and forth and back and forth. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Bible that they're reading has not lived up to the maker who has created it. Go back with me to the scriptures right here. We done seen where it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Greek, uh, Gentile, does, does, the Jew or the Greek, it, does, it don't matter. Look, whatever walk of life, God is rich unto all and, 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 and he's uh, given us all an opportunity. And we thank God for that. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we thank God for that. But verse number 14, look at it with me. How then shall they call on him in whom they not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? All three are good questions. Verse 15, read it with me. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Huh. Now for the sake of time tonight, and also for argument, if you will, who is to preach? Now before you respond and give me your answer, what preaching is, is spreading the message. Have you all know what Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, and 20 says? He tells us right there that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're supposed to do. So before you all say, well, you're the preacher. Yes, I get that. I'm not just a preacher. I'm a pastor. He's not talking about pastors here. He's talking about people that spread the gospel, share the good news. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Why? Because the world needs to hear the message. So back at the text, he's talking about, and I want you to look from the back, verse number 15, back to verse number 14. That's so important. Look at what he's talking about. Look about who he's talking about. Verse number 15, look at it with me. He says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, who is that? Who goes and tells the good news? Who shares the gospel? Who declares the word of God? Hmm. Hmm. The more I ponder this, Brother Mike, the more I understand my grandmother was correct. 
I am the Bible that people are reading. Verse 16 is your answer. Look at it with me. But they have not obeyed, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who have believed our report? Huh. Isaiah says, Lord, who's believed our report? He didn't say Jesus' report. He said our report. Hold on here one second. You mean to tell me I have a report? You betcha. You betcha. You see, the way that you conduct your life, the way that you live your life, speaks volumes about who's and what you are. I'll give you an example. COVID-19. COVID-19 happened, and how did a lot of us react? It speaks volumes about who and what we are. Amen. Amen. How we deal with the troubles and the trials of our lives speak volumes about who and what we are. Think about that. How we interact with our neighbors, how we go to the grocery store, how we act at the job site, how we go and run up and down this highway speaks volumes about who and what we really are. Huh. You mean to tell me that my life affects others? Well, back up to the scriptures. Look at what he says. Who hath believed our report? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that, pre that, that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And so I want to ask the question tonight and ponder it to you very seriously. How are they going to know who Jesus really is if you don't tell? Do you really think for a number of years we went around and around and around? KJV 1611, KJV 1611, that's what we're, what we're KJV, and we are. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's everything right with it. It's, it's, it's good to know what you stand on, what you stand on, what you are. Hey, nothing wrong. But when we're sitting there arguing over all that stuff, that world out there that's dying and going to hell, we ain't benefiting them one little iota. We're wrestling around in here about this little thing and that little thing. When we're so hung up on, Brother Tim, all these little issues out there where it really matters, where it really counts, they're dying and going to hell. We're not here for us. Here's the thing. I'm saved. Charla, I'm saved. I'm already, I'm sound, sealed, and delivered. Amen. Hey, I can't get any more saved than I already am. I'm saved until the day, I'm already in. But there's a lot of people around me that they're not. And how I conduct and carry my life, Miss June, it speaks volumes of who and what I really am. If I really care like I say that I do, if I really are concerned like, like I ought to be, amen, hey, I ought to look at my own heart and see where I'm at and make sure that I'm rising to the challenge that God gives me. Now go with me to Ephesians chapter number 5, if you will, tonight. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 15. Ephesians 5, verse number 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Why? Verse 16. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Now before I go any further, I want to ask the question, do you think that that applies to today? Is that the here and now? Would you say today is evil? Then should we not redeem our time and use it wisely? Read on. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now I'm sure, Brother Bill, if I started around the room tonight and asked, what is God's will? I imagine I would get different responses from different ones. But what is the will of the Lord? Well, I found out in the scriptures, Brother Tim, that he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Y'all believe that? So how are we going to reach that? How are we going to achieve what God wants if we're the Bible that they're reading? By this formula that he's talking about. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 
Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto, the, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, why in the name of God would God put that into his word? Because it's the way he wants you to carry your word. It's the way he wants you to carry your word. Look at it with me. Let me back up here. He says, redeeming the time. Use your time. Why? The days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, before I go any further, I want to ask you the question. How can you know what God's will is if you're not in God's word? If you're not in the book, you're not going to know it. Study to show thyself a prudent unto God, a workman need not to be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. Get in the word and study it. 2 Timothy 2, verse number 15. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, early furnished unto all good works. That's it, by the way, it's chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 is where that one is. Now why? Because what God wants you to do is, know some things, Brother Ed, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Then he goes on. He says, Wherefore be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Boy, how we, we really get hung up on all that stuff. But be filled with the Spirit. What should be our motivation in our drive? The Holy Spirit of God. That God move and motivate us. Read on. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and melody in your hearts to the Lord. Now, where are you going to get psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? Where are you going to get that? Well, i tell you a good place to start. It's in the book of Psalms. Amen. Amen? Meditate upon that stuff. Be amazed how the word of God through the book of Psalms will enrich your day. Sure enough, when you get in there and you focus on that stuff, why? It will boost your heart. Look what he says. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. Then guess what? Now that we've done that, Brother Jeff, guess what's next? Attitude check. Attitude check. Where's our attitude at? What kind of attitude do we have? Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks. Now, Daryl, when we reach that place right there where our attitude's in the right place, it's checked like it ought to be. Amen. Y'all want me tonight? That brings to the next thing. Now we're ready to go out and do business. Submitting. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. It's the way, Brother Mike, we ought to conduct ourselves on a daily basis, being the walking word of God. Read on. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 17. 1 Corinthians 1, verse number 17. You see, the way that we go about this business of God speaks volumes about who and what we really are. And if we carry out and do what God wants us to do, think about the lives that we can touch and look at the results that we can get. Now, I know there's a lot of different ideas of how to do the ministry of God. There's only one that knows the right way how to do his ministry, and that's God. Amen. There's a lot of ideas. But only God knows the right way. And here it is. Look at it with me. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effects. Do you realize that we can doctor up anything and have a little sermonette that I can throw out here on the table for you tonight. And that don't, that don't matter to hell of beans for anything that God really wants. This is what I'm preaching tonight. I'm here to tell you, God's word will make the difference in your life if you listen to it. Listen to what is being said. It'll make all the difference in the world. You know why? Because it's in the power, it's in the word. Read on. Not with words of man's wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. By the foolishness of preaching. I'm here to declare his word. I'm here to be a preacher of the word of God. You know why? Because it's there, Brother Bill, the job will get done. Now, I'm sure you, through your ministry, as I, through my ministry, we've had people come up and say, well, we got new methods and new ways, and we got this and we got that. I got news for you. Man's way won't get it done. God's word will always get the job done. It's through the foolishness of preaching. So how we declare that word makes a big difference. Go on with me. Look what he says. For after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But, the, but, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble not, uh, are, are called, but... God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. I'm here to tell you, I get right there, Miss Irene, and that's a humbling passage of Scripture. You know why? Because not many wise, not many mighty. You say, well, preacher, he called you. Exactly. Exactly. I realize where he called me. I realize where he picked me up out of that horrible pit. I realize what God has done in my life. But I also realize his great love and how that can overcome all things. And the more and more I let God's word have, a, have hold of my life and take control of my life, I'm here to tell you, it grows me, it develops me. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Now that I'm understanding what my position, what my place, what my purpose, when I realize, Brother Jeff, why I'm here, that gives me a better understanding of what God expects out of me and what he wants from me. Now why is that an important issue? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. I'm not here to rip you apart, and I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to pick you up. You've heard me say, I'm one beggar showing another beggar where to get the bread. That's what that means. I'm here to help you. I'm here to uplift you. I didn't get it on my own. I got it by the hand of God. Amen? And guess what? He's going to use my hand to help somebody else up, Brother Mike, so they too can get on that solid ground where they need to be. That's why we're here. We're here to help one another. Do you not understand? Look, if God did not see any value in you and me about being here after he saved us, we'd already be in heaven. But the value is this, Brother Vern that you'll reach out and help somebody else. You'll be, look, look what he says. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us, that's us, the ministry of reconciliation. That's our job. That's our job. Now, if y'all could square away with me, if y'all could square away with me, How is helping somebody be reconciled to God if we're ripping them apart? You tell me. 
How is helping somebody when we're so much down on them? How's that going to help them? Do y'all realize we all sin? We all had troubles? Is there anybody in here that has not sinned? Is there anybody in here that's perfect? You asked me the question earlier, Alan. Do we sin every day? Yes. You know why? As long as I'm in this physical body, I am subject to that. I had to contend with it daily. That's why I had to go to God daily and ask him to forgive me daily. That's Bible. That's not man saying that. That's God's word saying that. So guess what? We sin. That may blow people's minds, but I'm a believer, been saved for 37 years, and I still sin. But God didn't love me because I'm a sinner. God loves me because he has a heart for me. In spite of my sin, he loves me. I think sometimes we get the cart before the horse. We're trying to get people perfect. Well, guess what? We ain't perfect ourselves. Come on now. It's a work in progress. Is there anybody in here reached per, uh, perfect perfection in here? Anybody? Sinless perfection? Hmm? So we're still a work in progress. So he reconciled us and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So we're here to help people, aren't we? We'll read a little further. Don't stop there. Read on. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. His hope, Daryl, is that people would get right with God. Well, it's awful hard to help people up if we're pushing them down. We're not here to put people down. We're here to pick people up. It's what we're here to do. I'm here to tell you, what walks through my doors back there, I will take a lot that walks through my doors. I didn't say they were part of the church and serving. I said what walks through my doors. You know why? Because unless God saves them, they ain't never going to change and be different. They're never going to see it the right way. So it comes back to who have believed our report. Who's believed it? What is believing? So then faith cometh by hearing. Y'all with me tonight? You see, I'm here to reach out to a lost and dying world. I'm here to show them the right way. Go with me, John in chapter number 8. John in chapter number 8. Man, oh man, oh man. You mean to tell me? Let's just read. John chapter number eight. It's those books of John, Brother John. Brother John. I got two Johns in here. Amen. Some of y'all tuning in at home said, boy, he sure does call John that a lot. I got two. And for all you Johns tuning in, I call you out too. Amen. Let me give you something to really chew on. Look what he says. Verse number three. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I get thing in my head. I, sometimes I... They brought her. It takes two. Now, before we start jumping on this, y'all be very cautious and very careful. Let's get our little checklist out here. We can talk about what that sin is. What's well, easy on the circle right there? Amen. What about ourselves? Takes two. 
You see, they were picking and choosing what sin that they were wanting to bring before the Lord. Apparently, she didn't war, war at her welcome, and they could get rid of her. And it probably was their buddy that she was with, because they didn't bring him. They brought her. They brought her. <laughs> my dad went to Bible college years ago, and her and my dad in a nightly service one night, my dad reached over that slide old dog and grabbed mama's hand and grabbed hold of it. And the dead mother at the time, by the way, my mom and dad were talking 80 years old, so it was a long time ago. But the, but, but the dead mother at the time, those little bitty eyes with that big old auditorium right there, looked down through there and see. And called my mama on the carpet. I said, what did they, they do to dad? Didn't do nothing to him. Called my mom on the carpet for holding hands in that church service. <whistles> you bet. Ask her. How dare her? 60 years later and five boys, here we are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'll catch up to it here in a second. Lo and behold, what a deal. Woman taken in the very act of adultery. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us. Well, if you really want to go back to Moses' law, why are you bringing her to Jesus? <laughs> right too. Get you up with it. You'll come along with it. Here we go. That stuff should be stoned. But what say so? This, they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. And if you look in and keep in count, that's strike three. If you know your Bible, you're not to tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. This they did to kind of tempt him. But Jesus stooped down. He was a younger man than I am. He stooped down. He was 33 and a half years old, brothers and sisters. The Bible says he took his finger. He it right on the ground right there. As though he heard them not. So when they continued to ask him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him, cast the, let him first cast the stone at her. And again he stooped down and rolled on the ground. Now, I've heard a lot of preachers, Brother Bill, say over the years about what Jesus was doing. I've heard it could be he was labeling out their sins. Whatever he was doing, he was writing the word. Say amen right there. Because Jesus is the word. And so he's putting the word up uh, to them. And as the word gets out to them, and it's beginning to get a hold of them and everything. And, as, as, uh, and, and they that would turn him, be convicted of their own conscience. Went out one by one, and beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine, those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There it is. Go and sin no more. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to pick you up. And as he began to declare the word of God to him, how it moved, how it motivated, how it convicted, drop down with me in verse number 17. Key verse. Who's believed our report? Who's believed it? But they all have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So I'm going to ask the question tonight. What Bible are people getting? What word is being declared to them? Before you answer that, let me give you a few more scriptures to chew on. And then we'll get to preaching. Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians in chapter number 1. Verse number 27. Ha! <laughs> 
Do you really think, preacher, I'm the gospel? Do you think I'm the word of God to mankind? Read your Bible. you believe the Bible? Philippians 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Only let your conversation, the things that we say should be centered around the word of God. Hmm. Here's a tough one. Do you realize a lot of our chitter chatter and stuff? Let's be honest about this. Doesn't glorify God. Amen. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. The things that we do, how we conduct ourselves, how we carry ourselves should cry out the word of God. We're here to win the lost, brothers and sisters. We're not here to make them more a child of hell than ever a child of heaven. Read on. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Here's the deal. How we carry ourselves, how we conduct this service at this house makes a difference. Brother Ed, when I put my arms around your neck, brother, and say I love you, it needs to be real. You with me tonight? It's more than just words. How we carry ourselves. Look, that world out there needs to know this is real in here. Why? Because it is. It speaks volumes. And in nothing terrified by your adversary, he says, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to, uh, only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you, which you saw in me and now here to be in me. So here we are. Everything that I do is to be glorifying to God. My conversation. Do y'all know what your conversation is? To a deaf person. Hmm? Do you realize your body movement, how you carry yourself, speaks volumes? Let me ask you a question. I know y'all didn't live with my grandmother like I did, but it was not mistaken when grandma wanted me up. Okay? My grandma was early to bed, early to rise. Da, da, da. Y'all with me? And I worked third shift. So when I finally got my time off and got to the house and wanted to get in bed, I wanted to sleep and everything. Amen? Y'all with me? But there I am at Granny's. I'm a young man. I'm living at Granny's and everything. And all of a sudden, she'd go in there in the kitchen and she'd be getting breakfast ready. Now, I'm sleeping, let me sleep. I don't want no breakfast. But grandma wanted company. And all of a sudden I started hearing. Pots and pans, doors slamming, all that. You know, back, I thought, Granny, what's going on? Oh, you're up. Oh, Granny, I can't sleep. Well, you might as well have some breakfast. Granny, I worked last night. I, I, I need to sleep. Huh? Oh, you're up. Well, she'd say just like that. Nice and sweet and innocent. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ain't nothing innocent about that woman. You'd be playing cards with her and she got a hand over on you. That means she's reveling in it. Come on now, amen. You think she's having a conversation? You might be right, she is. Huh? 
What do you think we do when we slam doors and stomp feet, pouty? Y'all with me tonight? No, I wasn't mad. <laughs> what? God's going to get you for lying. Come on now, amen? Right? Be amazed at the kind of conversations we have amongst ourselves. I'll take your laughter as amen, preacher. I agree with you. That's what he's talking about, conversation. We think it's just lip service. You see, in Isaiah, the Bible talks about they praised him with their mouth, but their heart was far from him. That's what they were doing was lip service. He saw right through all that. He knew what their conversation was, Brother Jeff. He knew it was contrary to what they're supposed to be. Well, let's look at some other scripture. Hebrews 13, verse number one. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them that suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Will we really like all that? Will we really get on to all that? Read the next verse. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Let your conversation be without covetousness. The way you carry yourself, the way that you conduct your life, speaks volumes. As a father raising four children... I did my dead level best never to use my hand in a harsh way to my children. Now, that don't mean I won't tear up their little bottoms. But body language, the conversation that we have, speaks volumes. Y'all understanding tonight? It's one thing to say we love you. It's another thing to live up to that. Read on. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, he's done told us right here, Brother John. <clears throat> the hearing comes back to our conversation. Why? So that we might be able, in Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 13, verse number 1 through verse number 6, so that we might be able to say, our words mean things. Our words mean things. Just a simple little hello can make all the difference in the world when shown. Okay. How many of you have ever dealt with somebody about to kill themselves? I have. Matter of fact, about a year ago, remember Brother John? He's talking about going to put the gun in his mouth. I said, don't you dare. I'll get a hold of you. You think death's going to separate death? No, sir. I said, where you at? I'm coming. I did it. I did. He said, I wouldn't have said that. It worked. It worked because it came from my heart. He knew I cared about him. He knew I loved him. And he knew that I was willing to go the extra mile to help him. It worked. You know what went up? got saved. He got saved. Amen. And life turned around for him. And God blessed him. And Thank God he went on his very way. Thank the Lord. Amen. Go on. Hmm? You may be the only Bible that people are reading. You need to understand this is a real thing. It's tangible. It's real. Did God create the heavens and the earth? Do you believe?
believe that? We ought to live according to should we not? Amen. Do you believe that the ark is real? Do you really believe that? We ought to live according to should we not? Do you believe about the deal God stopping the sun for a 24-hour period? Sure did. It's in the Bible. It's real. What do we really believe? Do you understand the reason why a lot of people Miss Linda are not believing today? Is they're looking at believers and they're not trusting the story. You know why? Because those of us that claim to be believers aren't living up to it. They look at us and say, why should I believe it? They sure don't show that they're believing it. And they go the other way. And there's nothing to build their faith. Do y'all realize that in Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16, all the way down to verse number 21, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know what it is? It's faith to faith. What that means is that out of my faith will build your faith. And your faith will build your son's faith. And your son's faith will build Brianna's faith. Brianna, your faith will, will build Julie's faith. And Julie, your faith will build Miss Carol's faith. And so on and so forth. Y'all get that? Y'all understand? We affect each other by what we believe. And if we believe what is right, then guess what, Brother Bernard? of what we're talking about here. If you want them to believe and have the faith that you have, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance is tangible. Real. Real. Not fictitious. Real. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I'll make a plain example. I said to you this morning, I said to you this morning, y'all believe I was born? Well, yeah, preacher. We see the evidence of you walking around. Exactly. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here tonight. Bring us to our knees. Oh, Lord, how much we need to be the right kind of word that people read. We need to show what's real. When I look across the landscape, so many people don't know what to believe anymore. That's our fault. Because we hadn't been showing them the right book. Help us, dear Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. All stand. What page, Brother John? Page 278. 278. If God's born in your heart tonight, you come. Whatever the need is, come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. Some have started, others need to. Come on right now. Jesus is tenderly calling you. Come on. Calling Come on. Today, Come on. Calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will thy roam? Father and father away. Calling today. Amen. Calling today. Jesus is calling Calling Give me another, Brother John. Jesus is calling the weary to rest. Calling today, calling today. He will not murder, and you shall be blessed. He will not turn you away. Amen. Calling today. Calling today. Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today. Amen. I tell you what, I think my grandmother could look across that great gulf called eternity. And she'd say, Shane, I ain't believing you, boy. You know, the thing she used to tell me, she four foot two, little, she wasn't big as a minute. She sure enough wasn't, she wasn't big as a minute. But I tell you what, some of the things she'd say, but I thank God for her. I thank God for the fact that she was right. And
and that the real purpose here for us to be is be the Word of God to people that we come in contact with. That's true. Think about that. Brother Tim, they're not going to pick up the OKJV and read it until they see it in you. And then, Brother Mike, after they see it in you, then they'll reach for that old book. But I'm here to tell you, it makes a difference what they're reading from us. June, you've talked about your boy. Be the Bible that he's reading today. Be the Bible that we all can do. We all can do that. And be amazed at the impact that that can have on our loved ones. Just by John raising up and living accordingly. Amen. Be the Bible. Be the Bible. Oh, God, so good. Appreciate you being here today. Going to be dismissed tonight. Brother, uh, Brother Mike, good to see you, brother. If you will, dismiss us in prayer.